Hi, I'm Chris. I'm on the communications team here at church. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is it, the weekly church news. Please remember, you can use the online bulletin to follow along with today's sanctuary worship service. Or for any of the services you're attending or viewing, please use the online connection card and let us know that you joined us today. And please also share your prayer request with us. There's also links to Sunday School Online and online giving. Dr. Heidi's Celebration Sunday is coming up. Save the date and plan to be with us on Sunday, June 27th, as we thank and celebrate and send off Dr. William Heidi to his well-deserved retirement. There will be a celebration service in the sanctuary at 10.30 a.m., and then we'll gather under the tents for a bratwurst lunch to salute Dr. Heidi for his nearly 50 years of music and worship ministry. Please RSVP for lunch by visiting stjohnsorange.org RSVP or contact Joan in the church office. VBS 2021 begins on June 16th. This summer's vacation Bible school is totally different. It's not just for the kids, but for the whole family. Family VBS nights will happen on alternating Wednesday nights this summer. We'll enjoy chapel time, community with other families, and separate breakouts for the adults and three different kids' age groups. Find the details and online registrations at stjohnsorange.org slash VBS. The Patriotic Concert is May 29th. Dr. Heidi conducts the Ubilati Choir and a festival orchestra for an inspiring concert with thrilling marches and a salute to the armed forces. Join us at either 2 p.m. or 5 p.m. on May 29th in the sanctuary. Online RSVPs are not needed, but please arrive early. This is a very popular concert. Our Congregational Assembly is today. Please plan to attend and vote. Today's meeting will be held under the tents following the 10.30 a.m. services. There's also a free lunch today from the Next Burger food truck. Tasty burger combos are available today from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. Our meeting agenda includes ministry updates, budget approval for the next fiscal year, and election of lay leaders. You'll find the details and any meeting documents at stjohnsorange.org assembly. Let's focus our hearts on today's offering. We thank you for your partnership in the work God is accomplishing through our church body. Every gift, large and small, that's given today makes a difference in the lives of others. As we wrap up our Momentum series today, I'm drawn to our key verse, Acts 2, verse 21, which says, And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. My mind connects this to our offering because of the word everyone. I think of God's great commission, and I want everyone to know about the saving and healing grace and power of Jesus. Everyone. So I'm trusting that God will use my offering today to get that good news to people who need it. Let's pray. Lord, help us to come with thankful hearts as we give our tithes and offerings today. We are thankful for this place, for our church family, for all that you have done for us, and we're expectant for the hope and the future that you have planned. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Well, welcome. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. No better place to be on a Sunday morning than right here at St. John's as we gather together to worship our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I was so encouraged when as soon as he said free lunch and free burgers, nobody got up and said, all right, we'll stick it out for the next 59 minutes before we get up and go to burgers. But let's go ahead and stand together as we worship our Lord this morning. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today, friends, is Pentecost Sunday. And that's a big deal. Today is the day we celebrate the Holy Spirit descending upon the early church as they go out and answer the call, a call that will bring people to faith, a faith that we share with those who were there at the beginning to those who were confirmed and baptized this very moment, morning. So let us go ahead and confess this faith that we share with them together. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ, united in faith, united in the one baptism that is into our Lord Jesus, let us worship our Lord with our songs now. Did you turn your microphone on? Oh, testing. We're nice. good to go. Here we go. We're good to go. <laughs> oh, we look to the sun. Set our eyes on the Savior, see the image of love, sing His praises forever. Oh, we look to the sun. Let's say church salvation. Salvation. Tearing through the dead of night See the kingdom burst into color at the speed of light Freedom shaking up the atmosphere As the shadows fade into nothing as the day appears Come on, let's sing it out, beyond the skies above Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on the same. the kingdom come see the hope of heaven shining to the rising sun now forever lifted up from death to life there's no fear in love and no darkness in his endless light Beyond the skies above, love reaching down for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on the Savior, see the image of love, sing His praise. out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Let's sing it out. Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our at our New Testament reading from John. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you must also testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. 
I have told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I'm going to him who sent me. None of you asked me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because people do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Let's continue our worship. Better than you, there's nothing better. 
Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. As we just sang, he takes what we have done and turns it into something better. He takes the sins that we have done, the wrongs that we have done, forgives us and makes us new. That is why we gather each and every week as one people to come together to confess our sins and to remember that our Lord Jesus Christ has died for them so that we, we can stand together. Let us confess our sins to God our Father using these words of scriptures to guide us. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God God is faithful and just just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. We confess together, most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. You have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to you your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated and we'll continue worshiping together. Let us sing. There is nothing greater than the Lord's forgiveness for us. Let's carry this on into our worship and to the Holy Spirit. Your glory, God, is what 
we remember that those flames of fire stood like tongues over the people in the room's head and four out of five dentists agree that prior to the people running out it looked a little bit like this in that upper room are we ready Hector I'm gonna take that as a yes too sure if that is historically accurate but again that was the dentist they, uh, you know, maybe they'll get that fifth one when we get a little bit more, but uh, <laughs> sorry, I do love that show. <laughs> I didn't actually plan a transition after that, so I'm just going to dive right into it. On the other side of the resurrection, God's plan for our redemption continues and his resur uh, resurrection power is moving. And today we're looking at that Pentecost in the book of Acts. The story of how God's grace began to flood out to the world as the good news of salvation in Jesus would later spread to the very ends of the earth. And we're concluding our sermon series on momentum. So let's just dive straight into the text today. You can break out those Bibles if you have them with you. Otherwise, you can follow along with me on the screens as they appear. But we're going to grab hold of this Holy Spirit momentum that proclaims God's saving power for all people and invites us to participate in a story that is bigger than we are. Now, in Luke's gospel, Jesus' work and his ministry follows after his baptism, where the Holy Spirit descends upon him looking like the dove, right? And here in Acts, the church's ministry begins when the Holy Spirit descends upon the 120 men and women that were gathered in the upper room in Jerusalem. And what Stefan read for us earlier, that promise of the Father, the promise of the gift that Jesus told his followers to wait for, is what is received here and given at Pentecost. And with it comes the mission that continues to this very day of bearing witness to Jesus, of making disciples, of being light for all people. It's right here in our text, and it doesn't stop, friends, not until our Lord returns. So I'm picking up at Acts chapter 2, and let's look at the first four verses together. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now the Jewish feast of Pentecost, or the festival of weeks as it was called, takes place 50 days after Passover and was one of the three great pilgrimage feasts of Israel. It was originally a, a harvest celebration, but later it also became a commemoration of God's giving of the covenant and the law on Mount Sinai. Now for Christians, the coming of the Holy Spirit fulfills this meaning of Pentecost. It's the celebration of the gift of the law now embraces the giving of that law that is new in the Spirit. We see Paul pick that up in Romans chapter 8. Uh, there's this piece in Jeremiah where the prophet talks about the, the law being written now on people's hearts. And Paul picks that up again in 2 Corinthians 3 as well. So everywhere we see this fulfillment coming of a new way, a new law, a new spirit that is resting upon the people. 
Now, the Spirit comes when they're all together in that one place. It probably didn't look like the fire drill right there, but remind me to talk about how they're being all in one place. Will you do that, sir, later on in the sermon? Yes, you, sir. Nope, don't look behind you. Yes, okay, we'll go with Barry. Yes, sir, you remind me later. Now, the Spirit's coming is manifested with a couple of signs. There's the noise like the blowing violent wind, and then there's the tongues of fire resting on each other, right? Throughout Scripture, wind is often the sign of the Holy Spirit. If you'll remember back in the beginning of uh, Genesis, the Holy Spirit is hovering over the waters at creation. And that fire should take you back to when John the Baptist said, there's going to come someone after me who's not going to baptize with water, but he's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. This idea of loud noise, wind, and fire, which a little bit more here for the tuition dollar, was actually the original name of earth, wind, and fire, but they found out that that flowed a little bit better than loud noise, wind, and fire. Anyway, when all three of those are combined, they evoke memories of Mount Sinai, of Moses, of Elijah, ultimately that God is present here. Wind, fire, noise. Surprisingly, the sign that is emphasized the most is the noise, is the speaking in tongues. But it's not that speaking in tongues that Paul will later talk about in the love chapter about how when you have someone speaking in tongues, you need to interpret. Everyone heard in their own language what they were saying. Because here, in the speaking of tongues, it was impossible to miss the message. It says in, chat, in verse 5 here, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans, how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? And some made fun and said they just had too much wine. Friends, the countries mentioned here cover most of the world that was known to first century Palestine at the time. It shows that this mission of the church is to embrace the entire world. This coming of the Holy Spirit is going to be for all people. This Holy Spirit momentum will transcend all barriers of race, of class, and nations. And I don't know if you caught it in there, but when they were listing the names of everyone who, or the places where everyone was from, did you see that Israel's enemies were listed there as well? That region of Mesopotamia where Babylon came from, Egypt, all of that is to fulfill the promise that even Israel's oppressors will one day turn and acknowledge that the God of Israel has come and is the one true God. Many Jews from many different nations. Many Jews who had now begun speaking their own different languages, each one of them there, heard the message. Friends, that reverses what happened in the Old Testament at the Tower of Babel. See, at the Tower of Babel, the people had in their arrogance tried to build a tower to the heavens to to make a name for themselves. They were seeking power, they were seeking wealth, they were seeking uh, some form of security without needing God at all. Even today we find ourselves repeating those same mistakes, do we not? Still find ourselves doing whatever we can to try to make a name for ourselves, to prove our worth, to, to earn love. Chasing whatever the illusion is, putting ourselves first, Far too often, friends, just like it did then, it only leads to separation or division. See, in consequence of what the people had done at the Tower of Babel, God confounded the universal human language into many language. And people were scattered. The nations rose up with their own way of speaking. And here at Pentecost, right here, the Spirit, given ability of the disciples to speak in different languages, signifies that God is beginning to overcome all of the human divisions, not because of anything that people had done, but He is taking action to unify. How? 
What could possibly unite people that speak different languages, people that come from different socioeconomic classes? What could possibly unite across so many divisions that exist in our world today and back then? Friends, you know the answer. The answer is Jesus. We see it time and time again in everything we have studied through the book of Acts, from, from eunuchs to Gentiles to sinners of every race's class and nation. And you can see it even today as you look around and see those sitting next to you. This is the point that we as a church have been hammering through this sermon series for like eight weeks now. Jesus Christ is the unifying force in this world. There is no thing and no one else that can, can, can transcend our differences and unite us, can bring us together than Jesus Christ. There is no thing and no one else who can restore, can reconcile, can give peace and hope than Jesus Christ. It was pretty amazing that 120 people could all speak different languages and everyone there heard in their own. But do not miss what those people were saying. Friends, what good is a sign if you miss the meaning behind it? Jesus is Lord and has come for you and for all people. Only in Jesus Christ are your sins forgiven, and only in Jesus Christ can you be saved. That is the message. It's why Peter stands up out of the eleven, raises his voice, and addresses the crowd and says, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people aren't drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. Which led me to take a little break here because I, I never really know what to make of that saying by Peter and by the people. That they've had too much wine and, and that's how they can somehow become smarter and more fluent uh, after a lot of wine. But what do I know? It wasn't until a friend of mine sat me down and showed me the irony in the people's statement here. It's ironic because in the Old Testament, new wine or sweet not wine symbolized joy, symbolized abundant blessings that God would give people in the Messianic age. Jesus picks this up when he taught in his parables about the new wine that was coming. Then there was the wedding at Cana, of course, and the abundance, the very best wine, the blessings that come wherever Jesus is. And then he led me to this place where the Apostle Paul talks about not being filled with wine, but with the Holy Spirit. See, at Pentecost, the new wine is the Holy Spirit. It is the gift of God's love poured out onto human hearts. Pentecost is a big deal because the Holy Spirit transforms you. And we see that here in our text. When followers who were afraid and locking their doors will now boldly stand up and begin confessing that Jesus is Lord. Without the Spirit, they didn't understand Jesus' death. They didn't understand Jesus' resurrection. But now, filled by the Holy Spirit, they will be empowered to endure and confess Jesus as Lord above everything else. So we gather here today, and we may not see flames of fire on each other's heads. We may not hear violent winds being blown. But friend, let us listen to Peter's speech once more. Because Peter knew firsthand what it means to be reconciled to God and to receive what only He can give. Let us listen and be confident that this Spirit that was poured out upon them is the same Spirit that is being poured out upon us. Poured out like when I'm giving my kid a bath. Remember giving babies baths? You pour the water over their head with the cup. They don't know to, to close their mouth so they can't breathe. It's like, oh, they're covered in it, but it's amazing. That is how we are. We need to breathe in that Holy Spirit. Because we cannot be without it. And we should never, ever seek to be apart from God's Spirit. We have to cry out, call out for the Lord. Because too many times we seek to fill ourselves with whatever it is we think we need. Too many times, instead of calling on Him, we think we can help our own selves or find something to get us through too easily dismiss the way that God works, thinking that we know better. If you're like me and you find yourself doing that, you find yourself also exhausted with work, with stress, with worry, and with fear. 
But in his giving and his pouring out of the Spirit on account of Jesus, the Lord breaks that stronghold over you. The Lord comes to you in the midst of all the noise and everything going on. Speaks to you. It's almost as if he says, quiet your mind, child, and hear this. The Lord says to you, stop listening to the nagging voice in that back of your mind and instead listen to me. The Lord says to you, you are loved and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I will take these things that seem like floods and fires and blowing storms and I will replace them with my spirit. There are many voices that speak many different things. But the Lord says, hear my voice. Know that you are mine. Your heart is tired, but I will renew your heart and I will give you my son, my name, my spirit. That is who we call on. We call on the name of Jesus Christ and are saved, are reconciled, are refreshed, and receive the community that rests only in him. Peter says, what was spoken by the prophet Joel, in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Last days, the, the time that we are living in now, what's happening, all of that is still to come, right? We're living in it now, but Christ is coming back. But if you spend your time looking for the moons turning to blood or trying to read the signs, don't miss the meaning. Don't miss the meaning right there in the last verse. Call on the name of the Lord and be saved. That's Pentecost. Now, what were you supposed to remind me about, Barry? Verse 1. Yeah, everybody. There it is. Verse 1. They were all together in one place, just like we are now. Now you go back to that chapter, a couple verses right before it. You know what they were all doing together in that one place? They were praying. 120 men and women united together and praying. That little section there in Acts chapter 1 is one of the coolest pieces of Scripture. To me, I call that a back porch piece of Scripture. It's back porch because you don't see it in the front. It's just something you got to come in and then you spend some time, you see it, and it's relaxing, it's wonderful. There was 120 people that were filled with the Holy Spirit that day. 11 disciples get the Instagram stained glass pictures, but 120 of them received the Spirit. And 3,000 will receive the Spirit by the end of the day. Now, friends, you go back, and I want you to think about this. The names of the people that were there. I don't know if you've ever read Numbers, but there's lots of chapters of names there. I don't know if you've ever read Nehemiah, but there's a bunch of lists of names there. I don't know if you've ever read the end of the epistles, but there's usually a lot of names there. You want to know why? It's because each and every one of those names was known by the Lord and had received the Spirit and was out there bearing witness and loving one another. The names are written because they didn't miss the meaning. Friends, our Lord has been resurrected and has ascended and lives and reigns with one God and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Confirm that to us in our baptism, we receive that in the body and blood. And he is not finished adding names to the book of life. He's making all things new. And there are many more who, like us, need their names added to that book. 
So why do we grab hold to a Holy Spirit momentum? Because we can't help but do it. We must share Christ and love others. So you sit here together with me as one church, and I ask you, how do you want to do it? How do you want to continue making disciples? How do you want to share the love that you have received? How do you want to bear witness to the name of Jesus Christ? Will you start with your own family? Will you speak words of hope and encouragement to them? In times when you are afraid and you are unsure of you make it, will you rally them together and say, let us go to our Lord in prayer and be confident that our God is with us? When you see the hurting and the vulnerable, will you come alongside them, sharing with them the hope that you have, giving whatever it is that you can give? Now is the time. The end is near. Our Lord Jesus saves and calls you to bear witness to that message of hope. Now, as the band makes their way up here, I thought they'd be up here by now, but they're not. We're going to start singing again. Because when Paul said, don't be filled with the old wine, be filled with the new wine, the Holy Spirit, he talked about being filled with thankfulness. It talked about being filled with hearts of joy. It talked about singing praises to God. And it talked about going out with your hands and creating habits of love to other people. That is why we have gathered here. There is no other reason to give praise to Jesus and then to take what we have received and bring it out. Worship does not start and stop on Sunday, but worship carries into every single moment of our lives, especially to those who do not know, who have yet to come to call upon the name of our Lord. So let us as one people call upon the name of the Lord. Let us as one people go out and serve. Let us as one people love without ceasing. Amen? Then will you stand with me and we'll sing this next song. Yes. Let's sing of our Lord's fullness and of all the tongues that we may perceive his word and all the languages and of what he spoke to us. And on this day, and let us just take this in.
tongues of fire. Let us sing. Tongues of fire. Let us pray for all people, for our church according to our needs. Father, today as we celebrate Pentecost and declare that Jesus is Lord, we ask that your spirit continue to be among us and renew the very face of our earth. Lord, we ask that your spirit would cover us in its fullness of life, of communion and love. Give us new strength and missionary zeal to us, your sons and daughters, as you open our hearts and renew our commitment to you. Make us courageous messengers of the gospel, witnesses to the risen Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Savior. And as we go making disciples, Lord, we remember those who are hurting. We have many brothers and sisters experiencing pain, isolation, and sickness. We ask that you would bring healing and wholeness to Angel and Darlene Martinez, Tracy Brewster, Oren Ames, Jean and Andrea Kastner-Sago, Shirley Stickney, Sherry Wayne, Brian King, Dot and Chuck Stalter, Eric Von Baron, Carol Keene, Jennifer Emery, Tammy Sumner, Steve Lincoln, Joe Colombo, Sarah Andrews, Sabrina Green, Vivian Cardenas, Faye Janovich, Joanne Pert, Marie Viral, Bree Page, Millie Seton Arroyo, the Hoot family, and Pastor family and those we name in our hearts. Lord, be also with those suffering prolonged illness, depression, anxiety, pain. We lift up by name Carrie Tagia, Suzanne Miklos, Kathy Walker, Rose Higgins, Eric Reed, Marcella James, Patty Wilson, Ron May, Eric Klein, Tammy Somers, Treva Hensley, Jim Prentice, Kathy Taylor, Betty and Richard Johnson, Karen Teague, Bill Casper, Jim Lowry, Margaret Strick, Ken Strick, Denise Wyrick, Linda Blakesley, Jennifer Hoots, Kate Andrews, Julie Molsky, Catherine Kenvison, Carlos Page, Tony Fontana. Cure those who face illnesses. Bring peace to troubled minds, Lord. Hope to broken spirits and fill all with your love and presence so that they may be whole. Lord, we rejoice that for all those baptized into your names today, we especially give thanks for Elizabeth Irene Rossi, daughter of Dean and Karen, for Margaret Hope Martin, daughter of Scott and Christina, granddaughter of Randy and Sheila Bosch, Avery Alex Neary, Alexis Neary, daughter of Douglas and Kimberly, and for Kimberly Don Neary, baptized today, for Lillian Rose Freeman, daughter of Nicholas and Lisa, and for Nicholas Markwell Freeman. For Brendan James Crook, Charlotte Victoria Crook, Emma Marie Crook, the children of David and Danielle. For Ryan James Gerlert, son of Rex and Melinda. 
for Jason Youngblood Korngold, Austin James Korngold, and Wyatt Youngblood Korngold, Grace Annabella Korngold, children of Jason and Rachel, and for Rachel Miria Korngold, baptized today, and for Ronan Joan Reynolds, son of John and Gina. Bless them, Father. Oh, and for Gina Lynn Albanese Reynolds, baptized as well. Lord, bless them. So many baptisms today, Lord. So many people who you are working faith in their hearts. So many people that you have called by name into your family. Bless them, Lord Jesus. Fill them with faith and love and grant that every day they may walk in the newness of life by the light of Christ. Father, we continue praising you because of the work that you have done. You have brought healing and recovery to Frank Deptola and Porter Coggins. We rejoice, Lord, that your miracles never cease. And know that you keep working. We trust that you hear our prayers and are working to this very day to bring healing and wholeness in your Son. Lord and giver of life, we celebrate the birth of Hudson Dominic Reyes, son of Sal and Lauren, and the birth of Charlotte Margaret Grundum, daughter of Grant and Amanda. Lord, everywhere we look, we can see your blessings of love. And so I pray that you would bless these children that they be blessed with health and strength in them, equip and raise up their parents so that they may show them who Jesus is and love them deeply. And Lord, we continue with even more blessings as today we welcomed all the new members into our church family. We ask that as we celebrate this with them, that this, this step in their faith walk, Lord, would just be one of joy, would be one of peace, that there would be a revival of your love and discipleship here in our church. Grant that they and us may continue to connect, grow, and share together as one family as we follow you, as one body of Christ united in baptism, united in spirit, united in your Son. Lord, we lift up our creation in its care, our nations of the world, and ask that you would bring peace. We lift up our nation here and its leaders, our community and all those in authority. We remember and lift up those who care, who protect, who serve. We lift up our church and its ministry. We give to you, Lord, our families and our friends and ask that you would send us, Lord, to those yet who do not know you. Lord, may you add to our number daily, now and forevermore, as we declare that Jesus is Lord and there is life in his name and we gather everything we pray in the way that you yourself have taught us by speaking your words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you go today, you have that prayer sheet with you. I would encourage you to continue praying for those people by name, whether it is praying for healing or rejoicing with them. The prayers of God's people are powerful and are heard. Now I'm going to send you out to get burgers. Bless you and hope that you'll attend our voters meeting this morning. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. Before the band brings it home. Friends, did you see that little QR code on that prayer sheet? Are you wondering what that is? Well, my goodness, you must take your smartphone and hover over it and you will see that it's an opportunity to start doing what we talked about today, to start sharing right away. Because as we open up each day more and more here at St. John's, We can't do that without you, without you smiling, without you saying hello, without you hitting space bar next to Mr. David Cruz. So now let's bring it home and we'll see you out there voting. Let us become more aware. Let's see. Oh
flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. 